Hey viewers, Alan here again, back in the workshop. I want to pick up where I left off with the mini machine lighting upgrade and the, the light that I ordered has arrived and I'll show you a couple of pictures of that. But I've already pulled it apart and uh, there were two of these pieces and I've taken them off the, uh, the back plate or mounting plate. And my idea is to, uh, oh and uh, this is a fixing point which is uh, an M10 by 1.0 millimeter thread. Seems to be fairly standard for electronic stuff. So I'm going to uh, mount it on the end of a stick, <laughs> or a, actually it's a piece of um, tower rail, I think, but it's, it's got a reasonable wall thickness. Anyway, so um, to make that work, I have to make a bush to put in there uh, with the correct uh, thread for that. So that will then let me um, hang this uh, as I want to. I'll need to make a, a, some bracket tree to hold the other end up, but we'll, we'll, you'll see, we'll, we'll get to all of that. But the other thing I have to do is, I learnt from my previous experience, I have to have some uh, shades on here to uh, stop direct uh, sight of the, of the bowl. So I've picked these things up, they're, um, I think they call them weather shields for 40 nominal bore pipe. But they look like um, lampshades to me. They, they look like lampshades to me, but to fit them, I need to put a uh, a piece over here, which I'll machine out of some 40 nominal bore tube, and that'll make a nice secure, nice secure fixing or a sleeve on here, and then this will fit onto that. So I've got a few things to make. I've got to make the rod, the the nipples or the bushes to go on the ends. I've got to make the sleeves. I've got to fit these, and uh, some other bits of hardware. So let's get into it. Okay, have to make four sleeves to fit on the outside of these um, metal shades, and that will be what uh, the uh, the larger lamp shade as such uh, fits onto. Um, I have to machine um, a recess on the inside of this piece of tube. Now, uh, if I try and squeeze this or put this in the three jaw chuck, it's going to get bent all out of shape, squished out of shape. So I've got a piece of steel tube here, which is uh, just the right size to fit, be a good fit inside there. So we'll put him in, and then the three jaw chuck can grab hold of that, and I'll be able to do my uh, bore the um, the recess in the end here. So first up, we'll just uh, throw up the end of the tube. That's got it. Now to uh, bore it out to the required um, diameter. Okay. okay, we want 39.7 and we've got about 38.7, so we'll take a millimetre out. So let's start with 0.3. Well, that's perfect. I'm always happy with a good tight fit. Okay, so we've got to part this off now, the right length. I want to part this off at 22. Okay, let's see uh, how the assembly works. So, that's a reasonable fit in there. Might still be too tight when it's pressed onto the lampshade, but we'll see. We've got our ridge 
there. I don't know how well you can see that. Oh, a bit better like that. And that uh, ridge will fetch up against the end of the thing here. So let's get that on. It should be quite a firm fit to get this on. only just started when I did my last test fit so this is going to be a bit of a struggle so when it goes on there it's not coming off right started Ugh. it's going on and that's gone too tight I was worried about. Well, we'll have to relieve the inside of that now. That hasn't wanted to go all the way on for some reason. Why is that? Do I not take my final cut through to the end or something? Oh no, it's just stiff. Oh, it's gone there now. So I think you can, I think you see now that the um, that uh, shoulder is flush with the end of the lampshade. <laughs> what I'm calling the lampshade. But that has grown too much, and this is now too tight. So I'm going to have to relieve the inside of that after all, annoyingly. It's very hard to judge this because this piece has stretched when it went on the light and you can't really guess how much it's going to stretch. Now it's on there, I can't uh, see any easy way of um, reducing the diameter of that. It's going to be easier to try and clean this out a little bit. Well, let's give that a try. This isn't going to have to have much taken out of it. I might even see if I can put it on the lathe and give that a try. We'll see. No, the lathe didn't work. Uh, I can't. Uh, I can't mount it. It's tapered and it falls through the hole in the middle of the chuck anyway. So we'll have a go at um, uh, sanding some out with this arrangement and see how we go with that. Overdo it and get it loose. A bit too tight yet, though. Almost there. There we go, that's perfect. Now we can uh, put a camera again. So now we can get that in there. Pull this back over the top. And uh, Bob's your mother's brother. So that's two done, two to go. So moving on now to make the uh, one of the female nipples, it's got to be um, an OD, have an OD that makes it a tight press fit in the end of the tube, and then be drilled and um, tapped with an uh, an M10 1.0 pitch uh, threaded hole. 16.84. It is a bit of a compromise because this tube is not uh, particularly round internally. It's, I think it's called ERW, electrically resistance welded, something like that. And the um, and the internal diameter varies 
from 16.9 16.7 so um, hopefully we've got a, a reasonable sort of an average fit which will force the, the tube on and I did a test fit and it does seem to want to as if it will start so now it's time to drill this out and tap it for um, a 10 millimeter one millimeter pitch um, thread so the uh, drill diameter for that hole diameter is nine millimeters so we'll start with a stubby drill just to make sure the uh, the hole goes where we want it to go. Um, then we'll switch over to um, the nine millimeter drill, um, being the correct taps, uh, correct size for the tap. I was originally thinking to only go in about by oh, fifteen millimeters or so deep, um, but I because uh, that's uh, as long as the uh, bush will actually be but then it dawned on me that I needed room for the tap to go through to the other side because it's otherwise a blind hole here so I decided to make it much deeper and went to about uh, more like 30 or 40 millimeters deep and uh, put in a bit of a countersink to make it easier for the uh, the tap to start with a, a good uh, entry point for the, the, the thread so we start off with um, a taper tap and the, and the tapping uh, oil. I find it quite easy to uh, wind these uh, taps in, these smaller taps in, um, just hand winding on the the chuck it seems to work all right for me. And you get the feel that um, means you're less likely to break a tap. And follow it up with a plug tap because I did want the thread to go um, pretty well um, to the to the end of the hole. And uh, with that done, it's time to part it off. And I uh, parted it off at about 10 millimeters long. And a couple of strokes with a file to deburr it. Don't like sharp edges. Well, it was a bit warm. So I put it back in the chuck the other way around to um, um, get rid of the burr from the parting off operation so take that off flush and uh, a quick dab with the chamfering uh, tool again or the canvassing tool and the uh, the job's done piece made all right so we've got our threaded bushes that um, fit on there and We'll press into the end of the tube here. And that'll be how I'm going to um, hang on to this lot. All right, moving on to the next bit. All right, you're going to trim up the ends of the uh, tube now. I've rough cut it to 400 long. Uh, just going to clean the ends of the tube up square so that when I press the bushes in, they'll sit nice. Bit of green tape is to protect the paint. Exact exact length of this tube isn't important. Plus or minus a millimeter isn't going to make any difference. Okay, so it's time to press the bush into the end of the tube. Got it all set up, ready to go. Just watch the pressure gauge, and as soon as it starts to move, that's it. Okay, um, so to mount these um, the rods with the um, the lights on the end of them off off that horizontal bar, I've got a uh, made a metal tab with a bolt welded. On it and basically I'm going to cut this in half and there'll be a hole here a hole here and uh, the um, the rod will come up through through that hole it all makes sense perhaps when we see it later on so here you can see that I've um, uh, cut that piece in half and um, shaped the ends of the things and I'm just drilling the 10 millimeter holes now
you might still be a little bit puzzled as to how this lot works but uh, stick with it and I'm sure all will be revealed all right so I made the bush and inserted it that's got the M10 1.0 female thread in it and uh, I've cut the tube the light suspension tube to 400 long and uh, now I've got to set a fitting up uh, in the end of it so it can hang from this let's call this the suspension bracket the piece that I'm going to need will look just like that so that I can press into the end of the tube and uh, I'll go into the that uh, suspension bracket I'll have a Belleville washer and um, a nut to uh, set a bit of tension on that and uh, once they've got that tension set so it allows the uh, the the hanging arrangement to swivel but with enough resistance to remember its position when it's let go and a lock nut so <clears throat> that's what I now need to make is uh, this piece I need two of these so a bit of a shop drawing for those um, the piece that presses into the end of the tube needs to be about 10 millimeters long 16.85 to be a tight uh, press fit into the end of the tube it's a, a, a compromise it needs to be tight but if I make it too big it will split the end of the tube so 16.85 is uh, what I used for the um, uh, this is just the, the other This is just the other one of the uh, the first uh, two bushes, um, and I found that the, the that diameter was sixteen point eight five. That worked out just fine. It was nice and tight, but didn't split the tube. Anyway, <coughs> so I need a ten millimeter stub, sixteen point eight five. I need a collar um, to press against. And that collar would be nominally two millimeters uh, thick or wide. And then we get to um, the threaded part of the uh, the piece so uh, to do um, an M10 by 1.0 pitch thread I think I want to start with a 9.8 diameter spigot put the thread on 16 millimeters long and then I've got to bore a hole or drill a hole through the whole thing to let the wires come through and the exist the hole in these um, pieces which uh, you know factories supply with the lights for this job have a 6.9 millimeter diameter hole so I'll make that with a, an eye letter drill. So over to the lathe and let's make a couple of these. So I found a piece of material that's um, actually on the correct uh, diameter. So I don't need to reduce the diameter at all, but obviously it's a bit for the uh, the, the, the largest diameter, the, the little short piece of collar. But rather than take the skim off it, I think I'll just try and clean it up with a bit of emery paper and see how that works. It's a little bit pitted, isn't it? In fact, it's more than a little bit pitted. It's quite a lot pitted. But uh, I guess the question is, do I care? We will only see a two millimetre wide piece exposed. Um, <clears throat> we'll start by cleaning this end up. We'll start off by doing the plain end. Because after I've done that, I can uh, part it off and turn the piece around and hold that end in the chuck while I cut the thread. So we're going to take it down to 16.85 for 10 millimetres. So we'll start off with a 1 millimetre cut for 10 mil. Alright, we're now on 17.12. 0.27 to come off. And we'll go at, uh, at 0 0.14, I guess. Oh, right, well, there's our 16.85. Well, let's put a chamfer on the end here. Let's lose that big burr there as well. Yeah, 
so you see that's going to press in there all right I think I'll drill the hole after I've cut the thread to keep the rigidity up in which case the next operation is to part it off and we'll slip that back in the chuck So I've got to face the end of the, the workpiece off here and uh, bring it to uh, overall length and uh, now I've got to reduce the diameter down to the um, uh, 9.8mm required for the, the 10mm 1.0 thread so I'm taking the diameter down in 1mm deep depth of uh, cut uh, passes and um, the, the tip is not doing a bad job but the, I don't know what this material is but it just doesn't cut very well so we'll check the diameter see how we're going well that's got us to 9.96 we've got 0.16 to come off so we'll take the uh, finishing cut now um, and clean off the uh, that, that the back face of the uh, of the spigot, and reduce the uh, the width of that um, what I was calling a collar earlier on, down to its required two millimeters, and uh, also get the uh, the length of the stub for threading correct. Now there's our nine point eight, slightly under on that, but it isn't going to matter. Right, well, I'm ready to have a go at putting the, the thread on there. Seeing how good or bad this material actually is to thread. Okay, so we're going to cut the one millimeter thread on this stub. I'll do a scratch first, first to check to make sure I've got the thread pitch right. Oh, that's enough to. Uh, Check the thread pitch. Yep, that's it. Right, <clears throat> so checking my um, thread data chart. Basically, I have to go for a thread depth of half a millimetre. Well, if you cringed as the uh, the cutting tip approached the jaws of the chuck, you're not alone. That was a very clinch-worthy process. So I'm uh, running the uh, the thread cutting tool right up to the jaws of the chuck and stamping on the uh, the brake when it's about half a millimetre away. And yeah, there's plenty of opportunity to stuff it up if I don't pay attention. Well, I think that's finished the thread cutting, so I managed to do that without slamming the uh, the tool holder into the, the chuck. So viewers, you can relax. No drama here. This time. Right, I backed it off a long way, so I'd have the opportunity to put a clean up on the end there.
I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, that'll do really well. I'm going to call that job done as far as thread cutting is concerned. Uh, so, time to drill the um, hole through the middle for the for the wires to come through now. Okay, so uh, I want to drill um, a hole using um, the eye letter drill, but my letter drills are a very expensive item, at least in Australia they are. So I want to drill the hole first up with a commonly uh, easily replaced one, being a quarter inch drill, and um, then clean it out afterwards using the eye to, uh, to preserve its uh, sharpness. So with the hole drilled to size all the way through, um, it's time to give the, uh, the end of the hole a quick dab with the canvassing bit. That should do alright. So we're just going to brush this guy's hair a bit, <coughs> try and get some of the surface roughness uh, off it that's left over from the threading operation. Yeah, that looks a bit more reputable. Okay, I think that's uh, one done. All right, well with this piece made, you can see how that's going to work now, put that on there, and the nuts etc. Oops. So what I'm going to do is just press that into there, and then that's this uh, light hanging tube made. So let's press that in. Okay, so to press those uh, bushes in the end of that 400mm tube, I'm going to have to drop the uh, table down. This is where my uh, um, press mod really comes in handy. Hell of a lot easier than it used to be. That's it. So what you're seeing here is me lifting out the uh, little stub arbor that I used to protect the uh, ends of the threads um, from damage by, by the press when the uh, that male nipple was being pushed in. Okay, so I think you can see now how it's supposed to work. Got a pair of a Belleville washer here and on this other pivot, which allow this thing to move and uh, remember its position in these two different directions. And we also have, of course, the movement from the original gimbal. So you can certainly point the lights in any direction we like. A bit of movement that's crept in, though, which I hadn't particularly expected or allowed for is that. I don't know whether that's going to be a problem. We'll wait and see. But it's a consequence of a deliberate design decision. I wanted this whole structure to be um, quite light and uh, nimble and uh, really only semi-rigid. So if it gets a wallop, it can sort of roll with the punches a little bit rather than being immobile and damage being done to uh, it or whatever hit it. Um, and uh, the wobble, however much impact it has on my uh, lighting, I think is going to be an acceptable compromise for the value of having lighting, good lighting, which doesn't get in the way of the camera itself. Um, because these, these will ne should never be in the, the film viewfinder, if you like. So I'm hoping any uh, wobble, if there is one, uh, won't be an issue. It'd be interesting to see as well whether we get any harmonics from the machine that, that get it going. But uh, again, don't know if it, even if it happens, I don't know whether it will be a problem. So I'm happy for the moment to, to accept it for what it is and press on, get some uh, power to it and uh, get a real test happening and let's get back to it. Okay, so I've wired up the first uh, pair of lights so we can see how they're going to work out. Good news is they, they work. I suppose also the, the lights themselves are not in, the, uh, in the, the video frame, but um, I think you can see... Where's my hand? <laughs> yes, there we go. You can see that the, uh, even with the shading on, there's um, uh, quite a bit of... Uh, excessive light around the front of the the, uh, the units so that's not good also even though they're really bright 
they're not really lighting up the uh, front face of a workpiece there. So if I, in contrast, turn on the previous light which is over my right shoulder, um, it makes quite a difference to the illumination of the workpiece here. So I'm thinking that's not such a good uh, outcome and it might mean that um, I've, uh, I will have to reposition these um, new lights um, to have them more over my right shoulder. But let's experiment a little bit uh, more first. So I'll reposition them using the existing bracketry and see what that achieves. That's not a bad outcome. I'm getting some light now uh, on the front face of the uh, workpiece. Uh, enough to be quite uh, okay. I'm really quite comfortable with that. So uh, what did I do differently? Well it suddenly dawned on me that the bracketry arrangement that I had was sufficiently flexible that um, I could do this arrangement and that uh, does in fact bring the lights uh, in front of the, um, the workpiece might be best to see it from around here perhaps but it does uh, bring the lights in front which then allows them to um, shine on the front face of that workpiece so that's actually pretty uh, encouraging um, at least I've lost the lights over my shoulders here and I can still um, tip these guys up out the way as needed and the uh, the light bar, shall we call it wobbling, doesn't appear to have any effect um, down here. So I'll just give it a good bump and make it wobble. And I'm not seeing any adverse effect from that. So uh, suddenly I'm encouraged to continue. So if I make uh, the other one up, the, the light coming from the other side will sort of add something like that to the mix. And um, I think uh, Bob's going to be your mother's brother again. Worth pressing on anyway. Okay, so uh, as you can see, I've got all four lights uh, on their brackets and, uh, and mounted. So the question is, does it work? Well, let's have a look. Yep, <laughs> I've got to say, I'm pretty delighted with that, that light. It, uh, I have uh, my, I wear glasses when I want to see detail work. Old eyes just need more light. This for me is brilliant. If you'll pardon the pun. So I'm getting plenty of light here, and uh, nothing in the face from my um, <laughs> custom lamp shaded uh, lights. So very very happy. Um, I will have to uh, come back and sort out the length of this overhead beam. It's just uh, it was a stock item which I slapped up there. But I'm going to let a bit of time go past before I do that and uh, see what usage suggests is a good um, uh, length of beam. Uh, and then I'll shorten it and uh, that'll be that. Oh, the other thing I have to do is uh, each of the light sets has got its own... Um, um, line voltage uh, uh, earthed plug on it uh, and so it's just plugged into a switched outlet I'd like to set up um, uh, an arrangement where the, the, the both sets are, um, come on at the same time without getting involved in piggyback plugs uh, but that's a detail improvement so I'm calling this uh, project done and if it's given anybody else inspiration or ideas on how to improve the lighting of their milling machine then it's great. Thanks for watching.